So it's official, the Linux kernel's Rust experiment is officially over, and Rust now will become a permanent part of the Linux kernel, with it all starting in its inclusion in the mainline version 6.1 of the kernel. Kernel maintainers during the 2025 Linux Kernel Maintainers Summit have discussed dropping the experimental label. We're gonna discuss this announcement, and notably how Rust has had a rough go over the last few years, trying to get its experimental label removed and become part of the mainline kernel. This is big news. As as it signals a long-term commitment encouraging companies to invest in Rust even further as Rust-based kernel development is here to stay. We're going to read through this dropping of the experimental flag from Miguel Ojeda here in a moment, but I want to spend a moment talking about the initial Rust proposal and the skepticism that has been taking place over the years as Miguel has been on this for quite a while. Initially on Wednesday, the 14th of April, 2021, Miguel, some of you have noticed the past few weeks and months that a serious attempt to bring in a second language to the kernel was being forged. We are finally here with a request for comment that adds support for Rust to the Linux kernel. This cover letter is fairly long since there are quite a few topics to describe, but I hope it answers many questions as possible before the discussion starts. If you are interested in the following effort, please join us in the mailing list, the Rust for Linux mailing list, and take a look at the project itself. Cheers. And then Miguel went into the proposal and the core mission behind introducing Rust as a second optional kernel language in a new way to safely write drivers and leaf modules without rewriting or destabilizing the existing C-based kernel. From the beginning, Rust was never intended to replace C or touch any of the core subsystems. It was just meant to sit on top of them. And that's what it does today for a lot of subsystems. It just helps. It's another language that people can write code in for the kernel. And the main goals here on the Rust for Linux push was to reduce memory safety bugs and data races, make new drivers easier to review, lower the barrier for new contributors with a modern language, and improve long-term maintainability while enforcing better documentation discipline. And what a lot of skeptics of the Rust for Linux project were bringing up was they did not want to have people rewrite code in Rust or replacing any of the core subsystems or push Rust on existing maintainers. Well, over the years, that has really not been done. And even the proposal back in 2021 did forge out some of the known risks, including more complex tooling, slower compile times, dependence on unstable compiler features, and a smaller reviewer pool. At this point, this was really just the kickoff, as calling Rust for Linux explicitly experimental and in a way kicking off the project initially, although we had received mentions and work as early as 2019, this was the official start of the Rust for Linux project. That was also when the GitHub was introduced. The Rust for Linux, Linux project was all made to add support for the Rust language into the Linux kernel. Again, Miguel was the push behind all this, and it's fascinating to see years later what has happened. And over the years, after this official announcement of the project and release of the repo, in 2022, we had Linus Torvalds himself signal openness to merging the Rust infrastructure and trying to adopt Rust, which was later merged into the 6.1 Linux kernel for the first time. It landed a minimal experimental infrastructure in Linux 6.1, and over the next couple years, Rust support matured slowly, but it did grow. By 2023, we had the first real written Rust drivers that were accepted and even later released. These first Rust drivers shipped were Android binder drivers written with a new Rust implementation alongside existing C code, which the binder was widely deployed. It already had well understood semantics and was security critical. It was a real world test for how Rust would do. And to this day, there are only a few major production intended Rust drivers. The Android binder is still one of the biggest. The NVIDIA Nova DRM kernel driver is currently in progress, but is a new open source NVIDIA kernel driver, which NVIDIA is supporting, written in Rust, and is set to replace Nuvo over time. We also have the DRM subsystem Rust infrastructure. And you might be saying to yourself, that doesn't seem like a lot of drivers are a lot of use in the real world. Well, I think that is a interesting argument as we're going to get into the community sentiment here in a moment after we read through the announcement of that experimental flag drop. And if you enjoy videos like this, and dives into the Linux kernel, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. YouTube can get finicky. You wouldn't want to miss another video. So a big thing is by 2025, Rust is no longer just drivers. 
As the Rust for Linux project has even gained a Wikipedia page at this point, it is a part of core infrastructure at this point, which is already enabled in the mainline kernel. The places where it shows up and there's kernel safe abstractions for it is in memory allocation, reference counting, locking and synchronization. Rust is now used across multiple subsystems, including the Android subsystem, again, DRM, direct rendering management or graphics. There's plenty of kernel samples at this point, which is review or reference material that people can use. It also has existed across architectures now. Rust now runs x86-64, ARM64, PPC-64LE, and RISC-V, so you can build any kind of tools on any of those architectures at this point. So the tool chain has finally matured enough, which was a gating factor, and I believe that's why they finally chose to remove experimental, as you can officially develop with Rust in the Linux kernel, simply because because it is proven that it can live inside the kernel without breaking workflows, that it can work across architectures, it can work across subsystems, and it does have some real world deployments. Basically, it has not caused breakage. And a big reason for this is Miguel. Over the years, he's focused on engineering trust. As he pushed the Rust for Linux project from the beginning, day one, he framed Rust as additive, not something that would take over the kernel, which a lot of people have been afraid of over the years. I mean, over five years, it has been a slow adoption. And this is what we want. Want. We want a stable, slow adoption of a whole new language in the kernel for many of the reasons people wanted it back in 2021. Miguel helped spend five years proving that Rust could coexist with the Linux kernel's culture, tooling, architectures, and real world deployments without forcing this change on anyone. He went through all the proper channels and now we're seeing his hard work pay off and that experimental label come off. Now, it wasn't easy to get Rust into the Linux as we've kind of seen this before. There's a historical skepticism here. The kernel already at one point, decades earlier, rejected C++ as becoming part of the mainline kernel. Many maintainers even assumed that Rust would follow the same arc, enthusiasm, and then abandonment. So from the beginning, there were many doubts just because they thought history would repeat itself. Also, the experimental label became a trap. A lot of critics to this day still have used the label to argue that Rust was not production ready because it was experimental, that it shouldn't be used for real drivers because it is experimental. So it is a big deal that this flag is coming off. Also, there's been a lot of tool chain and build system resistance. Many people have brought up worries about reproducible builds, cross compilation, and how Rust would perform in long-term support. Also, a big real worry was who was actually going to review this. Not many, especially of the main kernel maintainers, even knew Rust, and they didn't want to learn it, didn't have time to learn it. So there was fears of losing review quality. But over the years, a lot of those maintainers, especially one of the main ones who co-signed this whole deal, we're going to check that out as well well, dropping the experimental label is now part of the Rust for Linux movement. Anyways, there were a lot of fears to overcome, and that's why things moved slowly. Over basically a five-year endeavor in trying to face skepticism rooted in past failures, tooling resistance, unstable compiler features, memory bandwidth limits, and just cultural backlash from more traditional maintainers who didn't want to fragment anything and keep Linux a one-language project, well, that puts us all the way up till today. As the announcement from Miguel comes in a Linux kernel mailing list. Email Saturday, December 13th, 2025. The Rust support was merged in version 6.1 into the main line in order to help determine whether Rust as a language was suitable for the kernel, i.e. worth the trade-off technically, procedurally, and socially. At the 2025 Linux Maintainer Summit, the experiment has just been deemed concluded. Thus, remove the section, dash, dash. It was not fully true already anyway, since there are already uses of Rust in production out there. Some well-known Linux distributions enable it, and it is already in millions of devices via Android. Obviously, this does not mean that everything works for every kernel configuration, architecture, tool chain, etc., or that there won't be new issues. There is still a ton of work to do in all areas, from the kernel to the upstream Rust, GCC, and other projects. And in fact, certain combinations such as mixed GCC, LLVM builds, and upcoming GCC support are still quite experimental, but getting there. But the experiment is done, i.e., Rust is here to stay. I hope this signals commitment from the kernel to companies and other entities to invest more into it, e.g., for example, into giving time to their 
kernel developers to train themselves in Rust. Thanks to the many kernel maintainers that gave the project their support and the patience throughout these years, and to the many other developers, whether in the kernel or in other projects that have made this possible, I had a long list of 173 names in the credits of the original pool that merged the support into the kernel. And now such a list would be way longer. So I will not even try to compose one, but again, thanks a lot everybody and that's it this patch submitted by miguel and this email says rust is no longer a trial or a bet it's now a permanent supported kernel language that is dropping its experimental label here's the lines of code that got removed which just explain that rust was an experiment and it's a massive deal because it's an announcement that linux formally is committing to rust as a permanent kernel language ending years of provisional status and unlocking hopefully long-term investment and signaling that there's a trust for other developers to make drivers and start programming with Rust in the Linux kernel because it's here to stay. We of course get people commenting back on this and we're gonna expect to see more over the coming weeks. I'm very interested if Linus Torvalds actually says anything on this, but we get basically the second in command, Greg KH or Crow Hartman acknowledges this fact as well, which is a big deal. Greg is a major player in Linux and is a Linux kernel developer. He's one of the lead kernel maintainers for the stable branch and many more sections of the Linux kernel. And this is a big deal to see Greg giving his buy-in and accepting the fact that, and accepting the fact that the experimental labels should be coming off as Greg KH didn't spend a bunch of time touting or even being a proponent. Instead, he spent a bunch of time reviewing code, accepting where Rust fit in and allowed for Rust to join kernel workflows more as a gatekeeper to make sure that Rust actually met the bar and would be allowed to stay in the kernel. So an acknowledgement from Greg Cage is a big deal here. Now, of course, this announcement hasn't been met with all acceptance. Instead, the community sentiment seems to largely mix. There are still people continuing to object, often on cultural or tooling grounds, but most people are happy about the decision and see the quality of work, especially with the years of maintainer investment in this. Again, the debate will continue, but Rust will live on in the Linux kernel. At this point, the main argument is still fragmentation, but five years of Rust existing in the Linux kernel should prove otherwise. Regardless of where you stand, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. This is a big deal either way. So Rust didn't just stop being experimental because it suddenly filled the Linux kernel with Rust. It stopped being experimental because over the last five years, it proved that it could live inside the Linux kernel without breakages, hurting workflows, or not being able to work with other architectures. It's now survived many release cycles and and is cross-compatible across architectures. Clearly, the maintainer is evaluated in the same way that Linux evaluates everything, slowly, with skepticism, and real proof needed. What this now means for the Linux kernel is that Rust is a permanent tool for writing kernel code and that more people can start joining. This is a massive announcement. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.